Okay, welcome back. Thank you for following along. <clears throat> I wanted to get the overclocking information out to everybody. I'm not, there's no reason to jump on camera tonight. I hope that it's going to be a quicker video. There's a couple things I want to focus on is what are the uh, basic overclocking results and then to highlight thermal paste versus liquid metal data. So let's jump right in here. So what I've done is I've chosen uh, the several of the top performers in terms of performance data and then looked at the OEM settings that the BIOS restricted the wattage and what the scores were and what the temp temperatures were and you can see uh, right here with the watts it's all about 253 and change so it really didn't fluctuate the motherboard held the wattage pretty consistent and then you have your baseline temperatures and your performance scores and then I went with uh, Extreme Tuning Utility through Intel. And if you haven't watched the methodology and the, re the first results section, I encourage you to go back and check those out. I'm not reviewing how I did these things because I don't want to be long-winded. So please go check those out uh, so that you can, we can follow along and this is more meaningful, hopefully. So when I did the overclock data, I uh, simply clicked the automatic overclock button, which pushed uh, the multipliers up one, one step on the performance clock and the uh, E clock, the E core, the P core and the E core went up one time, but we didn't pull back any voltage. So it was in effect to try to push the CPU and then see if it could handle the heat. Uh, again, I know if you're going to do this, you're going to do a better job overclocking and doing some uh, um, voltage reductions and maybe even get a lot more performance but again this is a basic overclock to show you the difference <clears throat> so when you're looking at that overclock data uh, for example the micro direct die pro v1 went from 66.4 peak um, temperature uh, to 79.8 uh, trying to go to one decimal point that uh, needs to be adjusted but 66 to 79.8 with this particular increase in performance and it, w it used 390.7 watts to get there versus the 253. So it shows you what it went up by 13.3 uh, degrees Celsius. That's a 20% increase in temperature to get a 16% increase in performance but it took an additional 54% of volts in order to make that happen. So as you're reading down through this list, because I don't want to you know, read it to you, if you're looking at sort of the overall picture here, um, the again, between the die and the cooler, or the die and the medium, is liquid metal. Those were your best performers. So it seems that, you know, with, with the increase in wattage, how can these coolers best handle the heat? And uh, you can see that there's some um, different configurations. So if you don't want to go with the micro direct die uh, block, you can choose the Iceman, and here's your data. Or you can choose to use the heat spreader. It's in for the configurations. And then there is a thermal paste option in a couple of them. And there's the Alpha Core 1 and the Optimus. But you can see the there is a performance difference, and there is a little bit increased heat. All right, so the, these are your trade-offs if you don't want to stick solely with a liquid metal. Uh, so I've given you some options there um, just, to, just to review. <clears throat> and so you're looking at approximately 14 degree increase in temperature for about a 16% increase in performance. And it took 145 additional watts to get it there. So we got to be able to handle that at baseline easily. Um, because your average temperature increased from about 71 to 85 degrees C. Uh, so that, at least if you use these particular situations, it gives you good, uh, some decent headroom uh, to overclock. But the other question is thermal paste versus liquid metal. I'm continuing, um, the, the data is pretty compelling that liquid metal is very effective on top of the dye. You have other options if you're using um, the copper 
uh, IHS or the heat spreader if you want to put paste on top but it is pretty obvious that the thermal paste on top of the die is not very effective um, from the results that I have and so if you're looking at and to orient you here this is how many different configurations had this set up so there was thermal paste at the cooler and OEM solder and there's your temps the overclock wasn't tested uh, I wasn't deciding to to perform an overclock until we delit it and I thought that would be useful information um, so you've got your pretty much a baseline temperature and performance score with um, with a with a setup there and then you've got uh, six options for thermal paste and thermal paste don't recommend it get throttled in every situation so even with the OEM temp two of those setups throttled and then all of the setups throttled as soon as you put the overclock uh, the automatic overclock to it but you put liquid metal at the die and then can put thermal paste on top between the cooler and you still get you still got throttling at the overclock but you didn't get throttling if just you let the BIOS control the voltage and there's your numbers they're respectable so if you don't plan on overclocking or pushing it and you just want to set it and forget it that's a decent option if you put liquid metal under both then you actually don't get any throttling whether you use the OEM BIOS or you set the automatic overclock decent jump in performance there's your change in temperature and then these two here were your direct die and whether it's the Iceman direct die or the Devour uh, Thermal Grizzly direct die or the Iceman contact frame the um, the die guard that's why there are five options um, and remember I couldn't test the Optimus with the die guard uh, it was too big of a block it sat too low so it really it was just between the core one and the coolants with the die guard and then the two um, and then the two options for direct die so it, when you use thermal paste on top of the die every one of them throttled uh, the direct die, uh, thermal grizzly, ice man, the die guy, they all throttled with thermal paste. And I tried to reseat them. I even tried a couple times to say, well, I just don't have good contact. Let's try again. They throttled every time. And then if I put liquid metal using those same setups, I didn't get any throttling. So, and the less medium that you have to travel heat through, um, there is some variance in your performance numbers but when you look at it it sort of makes sense that if the system if the setup is able to handle the heat the system can push the product quicker the, the system can push the CPU so it's a natural progression a natural continuum in my opinion that um, because it's more efficient handles the heat better um, the CPU can uh, do more work quicker you can stay in the gas if you don't mind so <clears throat> the cooling is most efficient if you use liquid metal uh, liquid metal is a must in my opinion between the die and the cooler when you delid the CPU if you're gonna do that just accept that you should use liquid metal and it allows the best performance especially when overclocking so with that information I told you it wasn't gonna be a long video but I wanted to make sure that you had all that information out here. Next ones, next videos to come is to look at the uh, products themselves to see exactly how I used it, how I set it up, how I had to change my mounting uh, if, if I needed to, and my overall impression of uh, swapping these things out multiple times, how they held up, what my concerns might be. And there are a few, but for the overall, these are some really good products that I've tested. Hope you found this helpful and stay tuned for more.